In this video, we are going to take a look at the tube and pipe environment in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, specifically, we're going to create a simple pipe run and then look at how to do a couple of simple edits to this. I had a viewer request this, so we're going to take a look and try to keep this simple uh, so this video doesn't get too long, but we'll try to cover uh, some of the basics to get you started uh, with creating pipe runs. I have in this assembly uh, just a plate where I created a few bosses on here that have a tapped hole in them ready for a pipe. Uh, you can create a pipe run in an empty assembly all by itself, uh, but most of the time you're probably going to be adding the pipe uh, to an existing assembly. So that's what we have here is just a, a simple foundation for this pipe run. Uh, to start creating the pipe run, we come over here to the Environments tab and then click Tube and Pipe Run. That gets us this little uh, dialog that pops up where we can give this a name. I'm just going to leave the uh, default names there. I have this assembly saved as Pipe Run Demo, so it uses that name first and then it starts building uh, files and folders called tube and pipe run. So I'm going to leave these as uh, as the standard default for now. So when you click OK on that, it is ready to create a run. I've already been uh, using this some. Uh, so instead of run 01, it creates run uh, 02. Fine with whatever, uh, whatever name pops up there for now. If you need to give it more descriptive names, uh, you can do that. Uh, before we start placing any parts, though, and creating a route, let's come up here to the Tube and Pipe Styles. I'm going to work with just this first option here. Uh, whatever standard it is that you need to work with, there's this. Uh, there's a whole list here, some in inches, some in millimeters. Uh, you just need to know uh, what standard you need to use when you're starting. So I'm going to right-click on this first one and say Active. And then I'm going to right-click again and Edit. And now we can come over here and change the diameter. I'm going to switch from half inch uh, to three quarter inch. You can also select the, the schedule of the pipe or the wall thickness. I'm going to use schedule 40. Uh, now we can save that, close that, and proceed with creating the route for this pipe. I don't currently have any, uh, any pipe routes up here, uh, so the new route option is ready and again it will come up here and give you the option to enter a name for this route and once we begin this now we have uh, the button here to start drawing this route when this dialog pops up the properties for uh, this route the only option i have at this point really is to come over here and select a point. I'm going to zoom in and click uh, the back edge of the threads inside that ball. So that gets the end of that first pipe embedded down in those threads. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit uh, and take a look at the options that we have now. Uh, the auto route box is checked. We'll look at what that does in just a second. For the auto dimensions, if we want Inventor to apply dimensions to these uh, lines of this route as we click, uh, then we can leave auto dimensions checked, but I'm going to uncheck it for now uh, so we can uh, take more control of what we want and leave some things undimensioned for now. Uh, we'll see why we do that as we go through. Um, under auto constraints, I think sort of the default option that comes up is the first three of parallel, perpendicular, and collinear. Let's turn on these three parallel constraints. That will just automatically apply a constraint, uh, putting every line that we create uh, parallel to the X, Y, or Z axis. All right, now we are ready to place our first line. Remember, we have this first point already selected down inside this boss. We have a single axis that comes up because it knows I am inside a circular feature ready to uh, start a pipe so it only gives me one possible direction uh, that I can apply this first line. If you bring your mouse cursor down over that axis, uh, it comes up and gives you a, a dimension there. So if I click at any point, it will give me a line that is the length indicated on the screen. 
But while I have the mouse there, I can enter my own dimension. Let's call that 8 inches. So that gives me my first section of this run 8 inches long, starting back inside that first threaded boss, and gives me a piece of pipe that is 8 inches long. Now look at what it gives me. I have this the red axis. Uh, notice here the red axis. That is the color of the x-axis. Every time I click a point, uh, the direction that I am facing is the red axis. Uh, then the green y-axis and blue z-axis come up there as well. I also have these arrows around here, and they let me control a rotation of these axes. I can click and drag that and... Uh, set a different angle that I can proceed uh, from that point. I'm going to leave that on zero for now. Uh, the other option here is this uh, cross-shaped arrow. If you click on it, it will change this direction out front, the direction of that red x-axis, uh, by 45 degrees. So I can uh, go off at a 45 degree angle, which would then place a 45 degree fitting uh, right there at that intersection. Uh, but let's leave the uh, leave everything at 90 degrees for now. I'm just going to come out to the side here. Notice now these axes are a little bit longer. Uh, they sort of adapt to your zoom level. If I zoom way out, come out here and click on something, uh, see now they have gotten even longer. Uh, so let's just drop in a couple of lines, and we're going to leave it right there for now. Uh, my goal is to get down here to this corner and connect to... Uh, that other boss. Uh, if I continue with the route, come up here and click route again and come back, get this last point. Uh, with auto route turned on, notice what will happen if I just come down here, click on that same uh, point deep inside that, uh, that boss. It adds pipes for me. Now, depending on what you are trying to accomplish, that may or may not be what you want. Uh, so I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to uh, draw this myself. I'm going to turn off auto route, and let's put in a couple more lines. Uh, and none, this doesn't really mean anything uh, where I'm going. I don't have any objects up here to uh, to work around. Uh, just demonstrating how we create uh, a path and have control over the uh, the position and the angles. Uh, let's come out this direction, the uh, the blue Z axis. Come away from that plate. And then I'm going to come out and uh, drop one there on that green axis. And see where I'm sitting right now. I'm off of the plate. And if I'm trying to get down to this boss here, um, notice what happens again. If I have auto route turned on, it's going to give me something really interesting. Oh, turn auto route on, come back down here. And it's going to connect to that boss any way it can. But I don't want to just take what it gives me there. I'm going to come down here, uh, start a new route, come down here and click that point inside that boss. Auto route turned off. Uh, now you see I've got uh, a new line started here. What I want to do is connect this end point here where I stopped working from the other end uh, to this end point here where I am starting out of this boss. So a couple of things to make that happen. Notice this one came up with a dimension on it. I'm just going to delete that dimension. And now I can take this endpoint, drag it out to wherever I want it. To get this endpoint to connect to this endpoint, I just come up here and apply a coincident constraint, endpoint to endpoint, and now that pipe run is all connected. I need to come back in here and add some dimensions. Let's just work pipe by pipe. Now, as you apply these dimensions, notice everything starts to turn black and show that those lines are fully constrained. It is best to start at one end and work your way across. That ensures that Inventor will recognize that everything is fully constrained as we go. I noticed that put a driven dimension up there because that height, after I set uh, the uh, this distance here, the distance uh, in the y-axis from this top boss down to this bottom boss, uh, I only need one dimension. Uh, that leaves that uh, that 12-inch dimension uh, set automatically. 
Let's apply another dimension to this line. Now everything has turned black. All of these lines are fully constrained. So I'd simply right click, say OK, finish that route. Uh, there you can see all of those pipes. Now if we're done with that, we can hit the green check mark here to finish uh, the tube and pipe run. Notice I'm still editing this general tube and pipe run assembly. And the, uh, the base plate here is grayed out, so now I can finish tube and pipe again and back, get back to the main assembly. Let's go ahead and save this just so everything is, uh, is secure. But now suppose we want to go in and make some edits to this pipe run. I can double click or right click and edit tube and pipe runs. Now I have run 02, which is the one I just created. I'm going to double click to edit that. And this first item here, that is the, the route or the 3D sketch that controls the path of this pipe run. So I'm going to edit that pipe. Now suppose I don't want uh, this bend in here. I can just come in here and delete those two parts of that sketch. Let's delete that 6 inch dimension. I don't need it anymore. Then I can come back and apply a coincident constraint and that reconnects. When I finish that route, it is updated again. Now let's go in here and do another edit. Uh, suppose I want this pipe run to end up up here on this boss. Well, I can just delete that line, delete that line, come back here to route and start adding some more lines. Start as we did before. Again, I want to delete that dimension. Let's add another route, start here, come up and get close. Uh, now I can't, uh, I can't place it directly. Let's back up a little bit uh, with that route from here. I cannot place it directly on that endpoint because it wants to go uh, directly horizontal, vertical, up, down, left, right. And there's not a good way without using auto route uh, there's not a way to connect directly from here to here with standard 90 or 45 degree fittings, at least in a single uh, piece of pipe. So come up here, drop that somewhere. Uh, this is still free to move. I can change that length. I can change that length. But all we need to do right here is click a coincident constraint, endpoint and endpoint. Uh, now those are tied together. Everything has turned black. Everything is fully constrained, and we can finish that route. Now let's go in, take another look at how we can do some edits. Go back in, edit that route. I can change any of the dimensions that are here, and that will shift things around. I can change this dimension. So I can edit that sketch. Uh, change those dimensions, and that will edit uh, the pipe run. Uh, one more request that was made, and that is how to edit the fittings uh, once they are on there. Uh, I can come to any of these components, to a pipe or to a fitting, uh, right-click on it. I can change the size. If I wanted to come through here and change all of these components, uh, I can change them individually. Of course, now that is a fitting uh, that is too big for those pipes, but I can actually select all of them, come up here to tube and pipe styles, right click, edit that. I can change the pipe size. Let's move that over there where we can see it. Let's click on that uh, two inch pipe, give that a second to update. And now you can see we have two inch pipe all over that. Of course, I would have to go back and edit uh, the things that I was connecting to to make sure uh, that is all the right size. Let's go back, change that to three quarter inch, back to the original. If I needed to change an individual fitting, I suppose I needed a different, uh, a different standard, I can replace from content center on an individual piece. That is an elbow, so I can, uh, when I open it, edit that, I get the elbows section of Content Center, 
And if you need to change to a different class, I'm on the class 150. Go to class 300, keeping it 3 quarter inch. Say OK to that. It does keep its uh, relationships, keep it in place. And now you can see that this fitting is a heavier uh, wall than this one back here because I changed it to a different class of fitting. going to undo that just so everything still matches. Now let's leave it at that for today. I think that covers the basics to get a pipe run up there, to be able to edit the route and then go back in and uh, correct some of those fittings if we need a different size. Pipe runs can certainly get a lot more complicated than this one, and there are plenty more features uh, within pipe run. But hopefully this will be enough for today to get you moving in the right direction. If this information has been useful to you, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up on this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you can do that to get a lot more Autodesk Inventor content. That's all that I do here. I create tutorials for Autodesk Inventor. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a great day.